Hi, uh, today I wanted to talk about um, one of our applications uh, for surveillance, uh, which is called QVR Center. Uh, QVR Center is a central management solution we've got for our surveillance options that we do. Um, as we've done quite a few surveillance options over the years, the good thing about QVR Center is it's built to handle uh, many generations of the surveillance. So if you've been a customer of ours for a long time with the surveillance, whether you've got uh, a really old VIO store unit, um, maybe a NAS running surveillance station, um, or even the newer options of QVR Pro and QVR Elite, uh, QVR Center can merge everything into one panel so that you could construct uh, views with, say, one camera from an older VIO store, one from an AS running surveillance station, and a couple from the newer solutions of QVR Pro and QVR Elite. Uh, so I've got a little demo here, but I'll talk you through QVR Center first of all. Um, so when you log into QVR uh, Pro Client, what you've probably noticed is there's a drop down uh, for you to log into different things. It's either QVR Pro and QVR Elite or it's QVR Center. Um, so what we've got here is a, a panel, um, I'll show you my setup in a minute, where you've got multiple different servers running camera recordings and you can construct a single view all of the same thing. Um, it can also do failover as well, so in the past we've used something called QVR Guard uh, for failover. Um, so if say your recording server was to go down, um, it bumps off to another one, a standby server that's ready to take over. And you can create failover groups and things like that. Um, lots of privilege settings within it so that you can give certain people certain permissions to see certain things, uh, whether it's uh, limiting what views they can view, uh, if they can have access to a camera, is it just the live view or can they also access recordings, things like that. Um, so there's a lot of different options you can do. Ultimately, you still have to be running a recording server on the NAS, whether that's as I say, QVR Elite, QVR Pro, or one of the older ones, um, but it's a, a very flexible option. Now, I've only got two um, servers in my setup, so for me, I didn't need a license, um, and sometimes even with more, you might not need a license, but there are options for subscriptions uh, with QVR Center. Now, if we go down here uh, to the sort of frequently asked questions, so the top one there, you don't need a QVR Center license if you already have, let's say, a QVR Pro server with the gold license on it, um, or you have some sort of older solutions, then you don't need it. Uh, but if you are running it um, on a NAS with more than two, um, you do need certain specs of your NAS. So here's some um, requirements that you would need so if it's up to 32 servers 8 gig of ram is fine if it's qts uh, but it does work on qts hero i've actually got it running on qts hero in the demo so i'll give you a, a little look at how i've got mine set up so over here i've got a, a ts uh, h1290 fx and on this one i'm running both qvr center and qvr elite now before i installed qvr center or, or went in there i fully set up qvr elite um, so let's have a look at that. So within QVR Elite, um, I created some recording storage for my cameras. Um, I also added a couple of cameras. So I'm not using any licenses for this demo. It's all the, the, the free built-in licenses. So here I've got a couple of cameras set up and they're recording right now. Everything's working fine there. My second NAS is a TVS H1288X. Now this one's running QTS. Um, and on this one, all I've got installed is QVR Pro. So in QVR Pro, again, I did the same thing. I created a recording storage for the cameras. And then if I go to camera settings, I added a couple of cameras. There are some free channels. I could have added more, but this, this will get the, uh, the idea across. Um, now with both of those, um, installed setup recording they are very much individual if i was to log in with the qvr pro client to either of my servers i would just see the two cameras they've got added so on this one i've got the back garden and rear garage um, if i go across to qvr elite i've got the driveway and the front garden so i wouldn't be able to see one view with everything in it now if i was to come across to qvr uh, pro clients so this is the software that you will use uh, to gain access to log in. So I could just log into my, my main host server. So let's say 1010.20.20, 10, uh, 20, I think is what it was. I'll log in with my username and password. Uh, so here I see just the two cameras, the driveway and the front garden. And I can absolutely just create a view here with these two if I want. Um, so that's created absolutely fine but i've only got access to the two cameras if i wanted to see uh, the rear garage camera which you can sort of see in the picture there or i wanted to have a look at um, um, the, the back garden i wouldn't be able to do it from this view i'd have to log out 
which is fine. And then I'd have to change the IP address to the IP address of the other server, uh, which I think is on the same password, and log in. So now I've got the back garden and rear garage. So I can drag those in and view those two if I want to as well. Now, that's all very well. That's great. I can see everything, no problem. But what if I want to view with all four cameras in it? Well, the way to do that, if you've got QVR Center running, is you would come out of here, and we're going to change the server type from QVR Pro or QVR Elite to QVR Center. And we're going to log into a different set of uh, details here. The username and password is different. But if I first come over here to QVR Center, I'll show you how I've got it set up. So within server management, I've added two servers. So what I basically did is I gave it the IP address and username and password of the QVR Elite and QVR Pro that I'm running on the other two servers, the, the H1290FX and the H1288X. So they're both added, they're both connected, it's saying everything's enabled, so that's how I've got those two servers added and it's showing I've got two channels on each. So I can expand those if I want to see more information so I can see everything about the cameras, that's brilliant. Uh, but if I come across to QVR Pro Client, this time I'm going to log in. So you have to log into the IP address of the NAS that's running QVR Center. QVR Center does not have to be running on one of your NAS that's actually got QVR Pro or QVR Elite on it. It can be a completely different unit for the central management. Um, no recordings uh, typically are done to QVR Center. The, the recordings are still done on whichever device is recording the cameras. Um, so here I'm going to log in. Now the username and password for QVR Center is different to what your NAS is. The default is just admin as a username, admin as a password. Um, I have changed it, so I'm going to log in with a different password here, and then I'm going to click log in. So now I've got um, a very similar looking view at the top left though, now it says QVR Center, and on the left hand side I can now see the four cameras. So I can see channels 1 and 2 uh, from the H1290FX, and I can also see channels 1 and 2 from the H1288X. So now I can construct a view, so I can drag in all the different cameras. So let's create all those. So now I can have a single view with all four cameras running at once. So I've logged into QVR Center. QVR Center, um, by proxy effectively, has logged into two separate recording servers. And again, um, that could be hundreds of servers. Uh, we do support up to 256 servers within QVR Center, each with their own amount of channels. Um, I think we do up to 128 cameras on the biggest, uh, uh, most powerful NAS. But this gives you one central pane um, for everything. Now those NAS in this example are both in my house, but you could have uh, multiple different sites um, which you're centrally managing the security for the sites in one of the offices. Um, and in that office, you could build sort of a video wall if you wanted to. We do have a video wall button at the top there that you can push. So if you've got a security office with lots of TV screens, you can hook them up and see everything in one pane of glass. Everything seen from all the different sites that you've got. And you can construct different views. So here, um, it's got an untitled view. So I could save this as a view of, let's say, outside my house, and I could add some more cameras for inside if I wanted to. Um, but this is how QVR Center works. It's centrally managing everything. And you even get a little status at the top here um, of all the different servers you've got. Are they online right now? Um, is, is one of them updating, anything like that? So you get a nice little control panel here. You don't actually have to log into the NAS web interface to see a basic bit of information about, uh, about the recording servers. Uh, one extra feature of QVR Center is that there is a failover management section. So I mentioned earlier, uh, this uh, slightly replaces QVR Guard. So over here, you can turn on uh, failover pr protection um, and you can add recording servers. So it knows your recording servers, so you can tick those and add them. If you add them into the top list, you can also have a standby server. Now, a standby server would consist of um, another NAS or another one of our Viostore units um, that's basically set up and ready to go but does not have any camera channels added in its list. It's just sat there waiting. Um, if the primary NAS was to ever go down, those cameras get added to that second NAS um, or Viostore device, and then they're going to start recording. So it's going to do everything for you completely automatically with the failover, so it's going to monitor it. So if I was to add the recording servers right now, um, I don't have a spare one to add, so they're going to come up and say uh, failover status, I think unprotected, but it's going to add them in. Now, if I had some standby servers, I could add them down at the bottom. So if I had another NAS with QVR Pro or QVR Elite set up on it with enough channels uh, to take the cameras added on these ones um, already licensed into them, then they would they would fail over to that standby server if they wanted, if, if there was ever a problem with the primary server, the recording server. Um, but this is how you would get 
um, QVR sensor to work a bit like QVR guard did. So right now it says normal protected, it's thinking about it. That'll switch to unprotected in a minute because it's realized that, there we go, normal unprotected because I haven't added standby servers. Now I can't add a standby server because the two servers I have are already in use. Uh, but if you had some spare servers, you'd be able to tick the, uh, the spare servers here so that they would be the failover in case uh, the, the primary one ever went down. Uh, so that's uh, QVR Center. You get a nice little status page of any surveillance events that are happening. Uh, but QVR Center, um, so if you just need to do up to two, um, or you have QVR uh, Pro Gold on all of your um, uh, recording servers that you have, there's no need for any licensing for QVR Center at all. Again, if you do need licensing, there is licensing available, but it does depend on um, how big a, a solution you're wanting to set up. Um, and again, QVR Center, if you are running into problems where your NAS is, is pretty maxed out with say RAM usage already, you can purchase an extra device just solely for running QVR Center if you needed to as well. Um, it does depend on container station as well, if I hadn't mentioned that. Um, so it's a dependent app that automatically gets installed if you install QVR Center, QVR Pro or QVR Elite. Um, so that's uh, QVR Center, central management solution that we have. Um, so very handy to centralize management for lots of different cameras all into a single single view if you need it to. Um, and again, um, largely it, it's fairly irrelevant how old your QNAP recording solution is. Uh, we do have um, op uh, li sorry, a bit of detail here telling you sort of the versions that you must be running on your older devices. Uh, so surveillance station 5.1.5, same with Vio store. So long as it's running that, um, you are able to uh, uh, add them into this setup. Um, okay, so if anybody has any questions, please do let me know in the comment section down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.